First of all, I'd just like to give a shout out to Limi Latuli, Battle for Atlantis, phenomenal tournament. From the competition, hospitality, uh, of course, beautiful Atlantis, um, security, <laughs> everything was elite. And that's what you expect when you deal with Lee. So just want to give her a shout out. I don't know. Hopefully she hears this. Oh, she said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> want to give her a shout out. Um, just really thankful for this opportunity. I told you all the story before. I think it was like five years ago. I remember, or maybe less. I heard about the battle for Atlantis and I was upset because I didn't get an invite. It was like a special invite. And when Lee called me last year and said, yo, we need you to come down. I looked at my administration and I said, I know we're going down, but pretty please, we want to play in this tournament. And uh, we came down and really had a phenomenal experience. Not just saying that because we won, obviously, that's something that we love to do, but we have truly enjoyed our time here. Uh, hi, Coach. Megan Smith from the Michigan Daily. I'm on the Zoom. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Um, you were able to outscore Michigan pretty handedly in the paint. I was just wondering what what was your game plan going in and how to shut down that paint and post play, and how were you able to be so successful? Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, Coach is so, she's such a great coach. I have so much respect for her, you know, and so I knew that they were going to be incredibly disciplined and they wanted to play inside out. So what we, we had to make a decision if we, where we wanted to dictate their offense. And for us, I don't think a lot of people have been shooting well in this tournament. And I mean, they had six threes. That's, that's uncharacteristic of us, but we just knew that they wanted to get around the paint. And so we tried to just clog the paint up and make them kick it out. And then we use our athleticism to contest shots. Cause I think they hit a bunch of those threes, like once the game was over, but in the course of the game, they only made three threes. And so I knew that wasn't an emphasis for them. And we just kept packing it in and helping because you know, it took a team effort to stop them. That's how good they are inside. All right, Coach, uh, before you came in, the Michigan coach, she was like, she believed um, Beamans put something over the pocket to <laughs> stop them uh, from scoring. Um, obviously, you know, very unique environment. Just tell me a bit about, you know, the support and, you know, playing here at home and, and the feeling of, mm -hmm. of, of winning. You know, last year when we lost, it um, wasn't a tournament, but we ended up losing the game. You know, I was just, the junk of the music started playing and I couldn't even dance, you know? <laughs> and that's why I made it a point to go dance once I heard the junk of the music today because I love junk of the music. <laughs> and the fact that I couldn't dance last year has kept me up at night. Um, this, is, this meant a lot. Um, shout out to the schools that were able to come out and support. It felt like a home game. You know, they got into it, and um, I'm sure they helped us. And I don't know that they put anything over the basket, but I know our fans helped. The Bahamian people helped Willa still win today. Next question, um, obviously, Madison won um, MVP. Mm -hmm. I, I know, I remember, I think she was the, the first big recruit who got yes. biggest in program mm -hmm. history. And to kind of see where she's come, you know, now as a senior, like what does that mean, you know, not only for her development, yeah. uh, the program as well. Maddie, <laughs> Maddie makes me proud. You know, Maddie believed in me, her and Snudder, before anybody else did, as far as recruits were concerned. You know, they came to us when we were getting our butts kicked. You know, we were losing by 60 points, and they never wavered. Maddie was our first McDonald's All-American, men or women, in the history of the programs at Ole Miss. So, like, she believes and her and I really have a special bond. You know, we are part of the same sorority. So when you didn't think it could get even closer, then she joined the sorority. 
And so now we're stuck together for life. And, uh, you know, Maddie is very hard on herself. And so for her to get this accomplishment, I think it will give her that boost to continue to play uh, the way she has been playing. And I think it's just a combination of all of her experience, USA basketball, 3v3, um, all of that just really allowing her to grow up and mature. We're, we're, we're proud of Maddie. I don't think y'all have seen her best yet. Um, how does it feel to be the first Bohemian coach to win the women's bottle for Atlanta's title? Well, it feels great now that you said that. <laughs> it feels great. It feels great to win, you know? Um, I'm telling y'all, like, I'm happy, but we've had three games in a row, so I'm really exhausted. <laughs> But I am in inside. I'm screaming. All right. With joy. It feels great. Um, it feels great for our team. We could have folded when KK went down. KK is an important piece to what we got going on. Uh, it shook me up, you know, and I usually don't get shaken up. I could just move on. Uh, but it shook me up. It shook Maddie up. And um, so this this win through adversity. Uh, will be one for the books. Um, Coach O, Sheldon Longley, Nassau got in here. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned KK. How important were your backup guards in coming in and uh, giving you what you missed when she went down? Man, my point guards, I just I just hugged them and just said, that's what I'm talking about. You know, this morning, I made all of them come to film. So they all came to film. Usually it's just KK and I. And I said, bring your other point guards with you for film and they came and I was showing them their reads. And uh, I had a conversation with Maria like two weeks ago. I said, Maria, if KK were to be out because of the flu, will you be able to step in and help us? And she answered me before I could finish the sentence. She said, yes, I'm ready. And so Maria is one of the best guards in Europe. I don't think people know that. Like she is one of the best guards in Europe. So this is just a different style that she has to get acclimated with. But the kid been playing against WNBA players and the like since she was maybe 12. So for her, this is just another basketball game. So I was really happy for her. All right, one more question. Um, is this your first championship under your reign at Ole Miss? And if so, talk about that. No, uh, we won one maybe three years ago in California. So how, how sweet is it to get this one here in the Bahamas in your hometown? Well, you know it means a lot. And when I saw the conch shell, I almost broke down and cried. The conch shell on the trophy was elite. You know, usually I let the trophies stay at work. But this one I may try to sneak at the house at least for a week. <laughs> Coach, I have two questions for you. Sure. First question, talk to us about KK. Is she okay? Mm -hmm. Um, Like, what is the status of, I saw her come back in the game, so it shows elite strength from her, but just talk to us a little bit about the injury, if you can. No, no, we. I don't know much yet. You know, KK is tough, so as long as she could walk, she tried to go back in, you know, but, um, and I almost didn't put her in, I shouldn't have even put her in, but it was mature of her to say, you know what, coach, you know, uh, I'm not ready to go, so we're just going to hope for the best with KK, it's out of our control. We try to control the controllables. That's not something we could control. So we'll just hope for the best. Final question for you, Coach. You spoke about March, um, knowing where you need to be for that, wanting to improve beyond the Sweet 16 level. Mm -hmm. Does this take you a little closer to where the team could be? The team balled out today. Mm -hmm. So does this, is this not a, sort of like a sneak peek for us here at home of where the team will be in March if we speak it into existence? Well, I hope not. I hope we play even better basketball. But I can tell you this, this is a step in the right direction. That's why we wanted to come to play in this tournament. You see, a lot of people that have situations like mine shy away from competition to protect uh, rankings, reputation, whatever. I, that has just never been my take. And so I wanted to come to a tournament like this to play quality opponents. All of them are top 25 in the pod. 
you know, not all, but like at least six of them are top 25, anywhere between 25 to 30 in, in the, in the, um, what's in the net. Okay. That's tournament worthy teams. And so this is definitely a step in the right direction. And hopefully we just can use this and continue to improve. I told the team, I wish this was the national championship, but it's not, but it's, it's an appetizer for sure. All right. Now, coach, we know throughout the tournament, you played three days straight. So I can imagine the fatigue mm -hmm. and you maintain that defense has been your identity. Yeah. Do you, how well did you think, well, we saw your team did tremendously on the defensive yeah. end, especially playing three days in a row. I talked about that, their fatigue and maintaining this high level of play for three days. It just shows the depth of our team. I think tonight um, I was able to play 12 players. You know, it just shows our depth. And and I want to use non-conference for that. See, I don't get caught up in like, like I'm a big picture type person. You, you're looking at a coach that went 0-16 in year two. I'm not afraid to lose, okay? Because there are lessons in losses as well. And so for me, I'm using the non-conference to develop my bench, uh, continue to build connectivity throughout my team, develop our identity, and to be challenged like we were in this tournament and beyond. Coach, oh. you. Coach, you know, uh, yesterday you fell behind by double digits in the first half. How important was it for you to get your team off to a fast start today? I don't know if you guys yeah. trailed. It was a key. It was key. You know, like I said, I have a lot of respect for Kim. You know, she is a veteran in coaching. Uh, she's someone I look up to. Right. So I've been like watching her a long time. And so I knew they would be prepared and they would be well coached. And so for us, we wanted to win the first four minutes of the game uh, because we wanted to we wanted to set send a message that we were here to win the championship as well. I thought our team did that. Coach, we saw a number of students here today mm -hmm. um, and speaking with a few of them, they said that it was very different to see a Bahamian coach not only um, coach a team, but also win a championship. And this is something that we normally see with Americans yeah. on television. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ask you, what would be your words to those students as well as other persons, you know, who may feel like this is a bit different for them to see? Well, um, if you've ever heard me speak, I say this all the time. You can't be what you can't see. And so representation matters no matter what. Black, white, woman, male, representation matters, nationality. So for me to come home and be able to do this and hopefully provides inspiration to the youth. You know, I did it old school. I graduated from the uh, high school in the Bahamas, Catholic high. Like I am like born and raised in the 242, right? And so like for me, to be able to go out and live the American dream, play college basketball, have an opportunity to do what I'm doing. And I hope that it provides inspiration. Quick story. I always wanted to come back and get into politics. That is something that I've wanted to do. But my husband had other plans. All right. <laughs> Right now I know better. I was young and dumb then, but I, I wanted to get in politics because I always had a mouthpiece and I can always, I could always lead even when I was young. And so um, hopefully it for, provides inspiration for the Bahamian people and anybody that there are truly no ceilings. As long as you have work ethic, you keep God first and you keep good people around you. Thank y'all. Media, thank y'all for coming. Really, y'all been supporting the whole weekend. Bravo. Co Coach Yo, could I ask you one more quick question? Oh, this, yes. is, this is Evie. Hey, this Evie. Is walk. Hey there. Toddy, Toddy. Toddy, Toddy. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I just, I know you want to get back with your team, but I just yeah, wanted no. to ask you, Um, so your bench players took, I think, a couple of more shots than your starting five did and scored 27 of your 60 points. How important is that bench going to be for you coming going forward? Tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. I tell our team all the time, we 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 can't win a championship one through five, but we could win a championship one through 15. And so it's going to take everybody. And I have players that come off the bench that can start. 
You know, I thought my staff did a great job recruiting this off season. And so, you know, hopefully that gives them confidence, Evie, to continue to build and accept their roles and help us.